I've been asking myself a lot of questions since I purchased this $3,900 one terabyte Apple Vision Pro nearly a month ago. Like, why shouldn't I just return the thing? It'd have to be something really special to justify that price, right? Something a lot better than my other VR headsets. The Vision Pro would have to be game changing to want to keep this in my life. And here, nearly a month later, I've come to several conclusions. And one of them is that I'm keeping this. I think the first question we have to ask among several is, what even is the Vision Pro? Is it a VR set? A spatial computer? A computer of any kind at all? A promise of what's to come? The future right now and the present? All of the above? Well, yeah, kind of, and no. When you break down the hardware, the Vision Pro isn't new tech that we've never seen. Instead, it's tech implemented in ways we've never seen by settling for a price previously unheard of. It's a bit like the original iPhone, which took one existing idea, smartphones, combined it with another existing idea, touchscreens, and came out with an incomplete and expensive product. But it felt new and exciting. That's the Vision Pro. It's not a wholly original idea or even wholly original tech, but it still feels new and exciting and like a taste of the future. You can see that in the hardware. At first glance, the Vision Pro looks like a VR headset designed by the same people who make ski goggles or maybe snorkel gear. But there's a good reason for that. Let's start with the band. The Vision Pro comes with two band options, which is unusual for a VR headset. Most people will tell you to switch to the double loop as soon as possible. But over time, I've discovered that's not actually always the best advice. I use the default solo knit a lot, in part because it looks better for photos and videos which was probably Apple's aim. But it's also more comfortable in certain circumstances, like when I'm leaning back and watching a video. Cloth bands aren't new, but the way Apple implemented this one, right down to the ability to tighten a cloth band with a dial, is new. It's like having an elite strap, but with a softer feel. And then there's EyeSight. EyeSight works a lot better than you might think, but it's not quite as bright as Apple commercials claim. That's down to how Apple decided to implement it. You see, if Apple had just slapped a screen on the outside and called it a day, it wouldn't look right. You'd look like you were wearing googly minion glasses. But by using a lenticular display, Apple loses brightness and gains depth. This gives the illusion that the digital eyes are inset almost to where your actual eyes should be. But what's really important is what it does for other people. When I wear any other VR headset, no one can tell what I can see. I may have passed through on, and I may be able to see a person near me, but unless I make a big point to face them, talk to them, kind of look them in the eyes, they don't know it. And they can't really look me in the eyes. But with the Vision Pro, they can. They can see a representation of my eyes that blinks as I do, looks where I look, and lets them know that I'm not just staring at a game, but actually talking to them. In the end, EyeSight is a great example of the triumph and flaws of the Vision Pro. So much of it is an idea with a great foundation and then an imperfect implementation. Like the displays, the gorgeous displays that I sometimes hate. By the way, if you're enjoying this review, would you consider subscribing to the channel? We're growing fast and you might help me hit 2,000 subscribers. Stick around and you'll see reviews for a smart grill, new Gobi lights, and more. If there's any reason for why the Vision Pro costs so much, the displays you're slapping to your eyes is probably a major contributor. Compared to the Quest 3, and check out my video where I do exactly that, the Vision Pro displays are in another class. They're effectively 4K displays, though there's some complicated math involved, and they're OLED to boot. The high resolution means you don't get the screen door effect, which is that feeling that you're looking through a screen door at a game on most VR sets. And OLED means you get truly dark scenes, inky blacks. It means that watching a movie in the Vision Pro is viable. But again, it's not perfect, especially for movie watching. Remember how I said I like to lay back and watch movies in this? That's true. That might be one of the most comfortable ways to wear the Vision Pro, and we are going to get into comfort with this thing. Laying back takes the hanging screen pressure off your face, and you can stick a giant movie screen on your ceiling that rivals anything you have in your home. And that's saying something, because I have giant screens in my home. But there's a glare issue. That's right. 
glare. And that's such an odd thing because normally glare is something you deal with when an outside light source is reflecting off a screen. But these babies are strapped to your face. So what outside light source could there be? If you have really dark screens and you use the dark theme environment, you'll get a glare coming from the lower corners of the display. It hurts my eyes and ruins the movie watching experience. The only solution I've found is to switch to a light theme environment, but that kind of detracts from the movie watching experience. After all, how often do you sit down for a movie, get out a bowl of popcorn and turn the lights all the way up? These are gorgeous displays, but this fatal flaw is getting in the way of one of its best use cases. It's a lot like pass-through, because pass-through is amazing and better done than any other VR headset on the market. But sometimes it's kind of annoying, partly because of the small field of view. Imagine walking around with big old swim goggles strapped to your face. You lose all the peripheral vision and even some of your main vision, but that's not the only downside. If you've ever seen motion blur on a TV, you probably thought, thanks, I hate it. Well, instead of seeing it on your TV with the Vision Pro, you get motion blur for all of life. The Vision Pro's pass-through is far more realistic and far better than any other VR set offering pass-through today. But it's not the same as augmented reality glasses or augmented reality headsets that actually let you see the world. You are, at the end of the day, looking at displays that are feeding you camera views, and no technology is good enough to overcome that yet. If you don't believe me, all you have to do is look out a window while wearing the Vision Pro. For some reason, when you do that, pass-through gives you an almost cartoony representation of the real world. But do you know what the Vision Pro does that other VR sets don't do? It lets you change how much virtual world you see at the turn of a dial. Other headsets let you turn pass-through on or off, sure, but Vision Pro lets you choose how much of the real world to show or hide, and that's pretty handy, especially when you use it as a virtual display for your Mac or PC. That's due in part to a shortcoming in Vision OS, and yeah, we'll cover those in depth too. Vision OS does this amazing job of bringing apps to the real world environment when you have pass-through on. Apple did a good job of giving every window depth and clarity that makes it feel like you have hologram displays all around you that you could reach out and touch. But sometimes they don't work right, particularly in the virtual display area. The OS seems to detect when your apps are near a surface and so it makes them somewhat see-through, which is pretty great most of the time. But in the case of virtual displays, that sometimes means you see your real display shining through the virtual display, which defeats the point. Turning the dial to hide that part of the real world gives you a better virtual display view while still letting you see some of the real world around you. It's one of the novelties Apple added that really pays off more than you'd expect. But as great as Vision OS is, it's missing things. The keyboard, for instance, is a pain to use. You could actually reach out and touch the keys instead of using your eyes and fingers to select, but it feels so much slower than a real keyboard, no matter how you use it. Voice controls are the best options, but who wants to do that all the time? And yes, you can connect a Bluetooth keyboard, but not a Bluetooth mouse, just the magic trackpad. And you won't find a USB-C port here to connect accessories, and even springing for the $300 USB-C developer strap doesn't solve that problem. And yes, the app windows look so real you feel like you could touch them, and you can make great, big, glorious virtual displays. But do you know what you can't do that you can on other VR headsets? Make curved displays. And I wish it could because that would make the concept of using your Vision Pro as your max display a lot better. Because when you create yourself a giant screen, you feel the need to move your head more to see the edges of the corners, but a curved version would help. Just like curved monitors make sense on your computer desk. That missing bit though isn't the only thing keeping the Vision Pro from being the device you should wear to work with your Mac. Comfort is probably the biggest problem. I spent a full day working inside the Vision Pro, which meant tethering myself to an outlet. I connected it to my Mac Studio and wrote news articles and edited videos all from inside the headset. It left me in agony. Whether I used the solo nip band or the dual strap band, the heavy headset just hurt me too much. I never, ever want to do it again. But let's pretend it was a comfortable experience for a moment. 
actually using the Vision Pro to work was a nice experience. I was able to give myself a giant monitor to work with, open up other apps, and still talk with my family when they visited me in my office. The main downside was when I wanted to share what I was looking at, I had to take the headset off and fire up my regular monitors. And that leads to the biggest flaw with the Vision Pro. You see, what Apple is promising the Vision Pro can do is so close to true, especially the idea of kicking back on a couch or a bed to watch a movie, since that makes it more comfortable. And the Vision Pro's displays, well, they're miles ahead of the competition. But I, I didn't like watching movies in the Vision Pro for a pretty simple reason. The one set of people I truly want to spend time with in life is my family. The very reason I went through all the trouble of setting up an epic home theater experience in my living room is so that I could have a theater experience with the people I love. And every time I put the Apple Vision Pro on, for any reason at all, I'm cutting my loved ones out of my life. Where's the joy in watching a comedy if my family can't see and laugh with me? What's the point in hiding behind the couch while watching the latest Doctor Who episode if no one else can see it with me? How do I share Bluey with my 11 year old? The Vision Pro isn't a shared experience and not just because it doesn't have multiple profile support. Every time you put the headset on, you enhance your own personal world and nobody else can see it. And what are you supposed to do? Buy two $3,500 VR sets? just so you can watch a movie together? It wouldn't be linked or simultaneous. You wouldn't even be staring at the same screens. And Apple's attempt to bridge some of that gap through eyesight and personas doesn't quite solve the problem yet. Eyesight at least lets me converse with the people around me and look them in the eyes. And personas let me video chat with people, but neither look real enough to not be distracting for everyone involved. Right now, the Vision Pro isolates you from the world. And the only real solution? is to take it off. What Apple has accomplished here is so much like the original iPhone. It marries together tech in a new way that feels futuristic, even compared to similar devices. But just like the iPhone, the Vision Pro is missing features that truly brings people together. The original iPhone didn't have an app store, and more importantly, it didn't have FaceTime. It's no surprise that the first iPhone most people really think of is the iPhone 4. That's when Apple introduced FaceTime. The Vision Pro has the same strong foundation and feeling of incompletion as the original iPhone. With more time and solutions to prevent the feeling of isolation, Apple could truly have a future where we look into the real world blended with the virtual world. I want to see how Apple gets there, so I'm keeping mine. But for now, I can't recommend you buy one. Not yet, but eventually. I hope you enjoyed this review. If you watched this long, would you consider subscribing? I have a lot of great reviews coming up and some other tech focused videos too. You don't want to miss out. Until next time, bye.